Good morning, I'm Bill Hubar, Chief Economist at Trade.com, and welcome to our market review. Our special guest this morning is Chief Strategist at WH Ireland, Mike Ingram. <laughs> Good morning, Mike. You remember everything except my name there. Good morning, Bill. Well, as we were talking about before, yeah. uh, three reports that I got this morning said, the market's tired. People are just ready to go home. You know, let's look forward to January 1st. What are your thoughts as we sort of end this year, probably not even looking towards the next year? Yeah, I mean, if you look at the price action, particularly over the last few weeks, I mean, it does kind of feel that people are packing their bags and, and edging out of 2017. <laughs> I mean, you have to remember that 2017 has actually turned, to be, turned out to be a much less problematic year for yes, exactly right. <laughs> than we thought only a few months ago. Um, you know, there's virtually no asset class which hasn't yeah. made headway. Um, we certainly haven't seen anything like bond market Armageddon. I mean, yield curves have generally flattened. Um, and in terms of equity markets, risk markets, we've seen, um, you know, most equity markets have done rather better than we well, were Well, as you just so. said, I mean, looking at two-year Treasury, okay, yeah, it's at its lowest level since October 2007. So, I, I'm sorry, I'm a member of the old school. Mm. Bonds went up and stocks went down and vice versa. But yeah. we've had the last two or three years a very strong both bond and equity market. Yeah, everybody's made money everywhere, and they've done it in a very low vol, yeah. low vol market. Yeah, I mean... You know, I mean, they used to say that uh, you, know, uh, you know, the yen was the widow maker trade, <laughs> yeah. but being being long vols being the widow exactly maker right. trade last few years. If if you'd been rolling over your futures positions on VIX vol month after month, you'd have lost two thirds of your money I know, this year. I know. Um, so it's not surprising that uh, you know uh, you know markets have done quite well. But you have, as I said, I mean, I, I, I put together recently a little piece, and it was the title was Winter Wobbles. <laughs> and you know, during the course of November and now into December, you're starting to see you know signs of stress. You know, the your, 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 um, euro stocks, for instance, already seems to have picked. FTSE already seems to have peaked. Um, you've been seeing some interesting moves, particularly in around some of the more tech-oriented stocks, which yes. has been a very crowded trade in the U.S. Um, it looks as though a lot of this momentum trading is breaking down. Let me interrupt that. And the, yeah. and the tech stocks, okay? Yeah. As we saw, once the, the Trump tax package was done, I mean, you know, we had the futures the other day showing up, plus 200 up in the Dow. Well, as we saw, really, the we had a record in the Dow, a record in the Russell 2000, Russell S&P 500, Dow transportation. The only one that really did move was the tech heavy NASDAQ saying yeah. that looking at looking superficially at the tax, th this will not be beneficial to tax stocks. Yeah, I mean, uh, because they're already tax, tax dodging, yeah. as, as you put it. Not my words, Bill. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> There are lawyers I, listening. Did I, did uh, I say but that? I believe you did. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's it's. I mean, one of the one of the sectors which is which has benefited disproportionately, I would say, are the financials. Mm. Um, you know, so even though we've had, I think, uh, you know, Bank of America, J.P. Morgan saying, you know, again, another quarter probably of, of low vol, particularly against, um, you know, mm. the Trump bump scenario we had this time <laughs> last year. Um, so, you know, we're going to be 15% down on trading, but you're still seeing financials do relatively well. And that's yes. because they're tending to pay more or less full tax rate. Um, so, yes. um, you know, even though uh, maybe we're not going to get a big bang in terms of financial deregulation, even though, of course, as I said, we haven't really seen a steepening of the yield curve, we've actually seen a flattening. They're saying, well, hang on, just that tax rate alone is for us a reason for us to be more positive about earnings. Well, looking at the financials, and, and yep. I know this is one of the things now that it looks like, you know, Jay Powell will be the new Federal Reserve chairman. Yep. Now, I guess maybe I'm reading the wrong people or not listening with both ears. When I can't tell you how many people are saying the Powell Federal Reserve will be same, same as the Janet Yellen. Somehow, I think it'll be a little bit more hawkish. Well, I mean, if you look at the rotation of the regional presidents anyway, which mm. is something we are pretty certain about, yes. who's rotating in and who's coming out, then it will be somewhat more hawkish. Um, it's, it's, it's just too early to say. I mean, you know, yes, Powell you know, is probably, in some respects, a little bit more hawkish than Yellen, certainly in terms of regulation, a little bit more dovish. That's yes. Ultimately, that's why he got the job, yes. I think. <laughs> um, but, you know, you've got, people, you've got appointees like Marvin, Marvin Goodfriend, even Randy Quiles, I'm not yes. so sure, is going to turn out to be... 
uh, a died in the wool dove. I think one of the issues is, as I think last time we, we spoke, was that Trump doesn't have an ideological bone right. in his body, yeah. so it's difficult to actually see a common <laughs> thread in these, uh, you know, in these appointments. Um, you know, it's a pretty eclectic bunch at the moment. But one thing we do know is there are plenty more seats to fill yes. on the FOMC going into 2018. Because it's beyond. quite interesting. I mean, I mean, I think it's, again, 95% <coughs> probability that the Fed will raise rates yeah. next week. And, I mean, most of the people I talk to, I'm still a member of the three... In 2018 club. Most yeah. everybody I talk to say, well, we think two and a half. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. But I mean, even Goldman Sachs is, is, has been adamant and, and, yeah. and has been for well over a month saying, we expect four. Now, yeah. looking at that, tomorrow we get, of course, non farm payrolls. Uh, I'm, I'm not talking about being, being a major number, but will it start to start having an impact? I'm looking more, I've raised my guesstimate to 220,000. Yeah. But I also start feeling that the inflation or the deflation is only transitory. And I could start seeing, you know, average earnings maybe 2.7, maybe even the rate goes to 4.1. Yeah. If it comes in at those numbers, do you think then people may start, again, maybe we may have to wait till next week's statement by the Federal Reserve, because it will be her, Janet Yellen's last yeah. real statement, yeah. uh, of whether they say, well, it, it, it could be three towards four rather than three towards two for next year, or will that make any difference? I doubt, I doubt the last dot plot they'll, they'll move like that, um, which I think is also a danger, yeah, because the market at the moment is pricing in two. Yes. Uh, two and a half is a weasel. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Forecast. Over, we know it's not going to be two. Ways. We know it's not going to be two and a half. Yeah, that's like saying uh, I, I, roulette wheel. I'm going to put yeah. bets on on both and pay for one. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm actually. I mean, uh, stop the press. I'm actually inclined to agree with with Goldman's on this one. Right. Um, you know, if I if I had to be well, either the, side of three, yes. I'm going to be four. Okay. Um, I I think the market is ill prepared for any kind of inflation exactly. shock, um, and I think you know there are some signs that. Uh, the job market in terms of wages is finally tightening. Yes. Um, and, you know, to some extent, you know, we can't say, well, you know, what's going on in, in, in tax and, and, and regulatory reform and so forth in the U.S. is going to be reflationary and there isn't going to be some inflation trade-off. I mean, that's just, for me, that's economically incoherent. So, uh, you know, we, we, we've kind of had it both ways. We, 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 are, we have <laughs> yeah. been in this kind of Goldilocks scenario of accelerating economic growth um, and relatively quiescent inflation. I'm not sure the trade-off is going to be that easy next year. I think the growth, you know, certainly in the U.S. should be a yes. bit higher. Uh, but I think we will also start to see, you know, some a bit more of a pickup in inflation that's not priced into the fixed income markets. That's not, I don't think, priced into the dollar either. No, by the way, all. because the dollar has been a major shock this yeah. year. Yes. I think. I mean, even those who didn't weren't outright bulls, if they were looking at a nine nine percent decline in the in the dollar index, which is what we've got yes. here to date, they'd say you were nuts. Now, that's of course, exactly right. now of course, FX, so they're all saying, well, you know, it's uh, well, we're expecting further dollar well, weakness. It's like great. I mean, how many know? people did we look at in January saying? Euro, 108, mid-year, parity by the end of the oh, year, yeah. you know. It's only a matter of time, yeah, exactly before right. it's parity. <laughs> yeah. So uh, apparently not. So uh, I believe if you're looking at, uh, at the dollar-euro forecast, I think they're at 117 year-end this year, yeah, exactly. 121, 2018, and 126. So, you know, that's great. I've got, the, I own a ruler, too. I can draw a straight line. But, but, the, but the, the really exchange I'm looking at more is euro sterling. I yep. mean, I think it's 88.25 now. Yeah. But more and more people are talking the next 12, 6 to 12 months, probably at the 095 level. Mm. Now, is that more, and I know she's had another bad day <laughs> with Theresa May about mm. what may or may not happen, whether it's today over this weekend, you know, with the, uh, with the eurozone. Because, I mean, mm. you know... It, you know, we we're up at one thirty four fifty or something now. We're struggling at one thirty three ish right now. Yeah. I mean, if you look at the broad basket, uh, I think sterling's up about two percent. Yes. So far this year, I mean, yes. we, everybody's been focused on, particularly the, the the media, being focused on cables. So of course, it's been flattered by that weakness in the dollar. Um, the against the euro, it's in the upper part of the range. Yeah. Trading range this year. I, I find, I mean, again, we, we are firmly in the realm of politics now, unfortunately. <laughs> yes, exactly. um, and I, not geopolitics. Not geopolitics. <laughs> um, Neopolitics. Um, we are, so we're in our backyard. Um, I'd be quite surprised with the resilience of sterling um, in, uh, you know, despite the political 
backdrop because you know I'm you know of course the Irish borders being if you like the pivotal yes. issue, um, and it looks to me I, I I can't see a solution there quite frankly. I um, either. But I'm th sorry, but I that was the case a year ago, eighteen months. How we get to this point and everybody's surprised there was no deal done. It's like how could you I not see that? I can't tell you how many <laughs> friends of mine yes. that voted Brexit. You know, in June 2016, and yes. we had friends over for, for lunch last Sunday, two of them were saying, I wish I'd looked at page two. You know, feeling that they thought it was just, you know, it was going to be easy in and easy out. And, and now right. it's a situation where both, both the gentlemen were saying, well, you know, they, they've gone, they're not remain now, but they've gone to neutral. Yeah. But if you look at positioning around Sterling, I mean, speculative position it is flat. Yeah. You know, we, we've, we've had shorts out there for two years. Yes. Two years, you know, pre-referendum. Um, it's a pretty flat market right now, and it's probably one of the reasons why you're not seeing very, very big moves. I mean, there's nothing, there's nothing to cover. And are you, you know, in the absence of any positive steer politically, any, you know, the, we've got this uh, you know, EU summit in a, in a, in a week's time, yeah. um, you know, Theresa May and co running very hard to try and clinch some sort of deal. Again, not clear what on earth that might look like. Um, are you really going to build significant positions no. at this, this point before year end? Probably not. You're probably going to take a step back, you know, try and involve, you know, enjoy your eggnog or whatever, <laughs> and then see where we are in January. Well, other than that, I mean, again, as you said, we still have three more weeks yeah. before we start the new year. And as I said when we started, most of the people I, I, I read this morning were saying, have a nice Christmas, you know, have a nice new year, and let's pick it up in January, feeling that, you know, the market seems to have had, a, as you said, a much better run in almost everything. Yeah. So either let's take everything off the table, thank you very much, we'll go into cash and start the new year. Yeah, or if you're a portfolio manager, you just reweight. you know, I mean, even if you were just tactically reweighting, you know, if you think about where the crowded trades were, Europe, tech, emerging markets, um, you know, and on the short side, UK, uh, uh, sterling, etc. You you could interpret some of the more recent moves just as a simple flattening of those those positions, really. So basically, looking at the economic data, mm. it should be not market moving. Hopefully, Donald Trump uh, will forget how to do tweets. Maybe we'll get if, if, <laughs> that's if, my Christmas <laughs> wish. <laughs> you know, maybe maybe not, not. You know, maybe the deal we'll get will be at least here in the UK, sort of non-negotiable. So. Would you really say, basically, it's, it should be a fairly, hopefully, calm next three weeks as we go into uh, 2018? It should be. I mean, there, I mean, there's no, I mean, other than this EU summit, there's no obvious tripwires um, there. But, of course, you know, as if liquidity is draining away early, <clears throat> then, of course, it's not going to take a great deal mm. to move these markets, you know, between Christmas and New Year. And, of course, it's why, why you know, a lot of, should we say more institutional investors yeah. they close the books early yes. you know on paper we've got three weeks but the reality is we've probably got you know maybe you know seven or eight trading days effectively left in the year well mike let me say thank you very much for joining us and also to all of our viewers let me wish each and every one of you a very merry christmas a very happy new year and unfortunately this will be our last presentation so Good luck for your trading the rest of this year and in 2018, and thank you very much for joining us in 2017. Thank you and goodbye.